today I'm going to talk a bit about Louis Edmund Blase, born 1861, demise 1951, at the ripe, uh, enviable old age of 90. A uh, reputed uh, scholar, educationist, historian, little known, I would say, uh, in the literary regime of Sri Lanka as a poet. But a poet he was, and uh, a, a person who composed consistently uh, across his lifetime. But largely, uh, I would say, in the context of uh, the school that he founded in 1891, uh, the school where uh, yours truly had his education, both uh, primary, uh, secondary, and upper secondary, uh, Kingswood College in Kandy. Uh, poetry which uh, Blase composed for a yearly, an annual recitation at the Kingswood uh, prize giving. Uh, so every year he would write a poem which would be performed, read out at the prize giving. Um, and I would say, from 1895 when Kingswood had its first prize giving right up to 1950, uh, 51 when Blase died. Um, except for a few interruptions, we have a consistent body of poetry covering 60 years. Uh, now the uh, curious fact is Kingswood uh, has kept alive this tradition of this annual recitation even after Blase's death uh, through the employment of a ghostwriter. They've got this uh, uh, body going and I would say 2019 would have been the last prologue because uh, to my understanding 2020 uh, Kingswood didn't have a prize giving COVID situation. So right up to 2019 we have uh, prologues of almost 120 years. And the prologue usually is a kind of a commentary on things that happen in the school, uh, things that happen in the society. So like at one level, it's a political opinion piece. It's a commentary on society. Uh, it's a kind of reflection on stuff that happen. Also, it takes into consideration global events. So if you take the prologues as a body, this is like an evolving, ongoing, continuing commentary uh, from the last decade of the 19th century to the present. So definitely a body of writing that has a significant sociological, uh, political, anthropological uh, and literary merit. Uh, so I would say uh, typically the prologue, the Kingswood prologue, it has something to say about all of the, the the Boer War, the South African War, the First World War, 1914 to 18, the Second World War, Sri Lanka's independence, right? Then post-independence disruptions in Sri Lanka as a country, 9-11, all these uh, era-defining grand moments, these are commented on by the prologue writer, Blase and uh, Blase's successor, the ghost writer. And this is why, in a, in a way, I think the prologues were of interest to me when I undertook my uh, postgraduate uh, studies a few years ago when I did my uh, master's, my MPhil. I was looking at Blase's writing and I was trying to introduce him as a, a poet to the Sri Lankan pantheon. Uh, because we, we, we do talk about uh, people like... Uh, Walter Stanley Sr., Reverend uh, W.S. Sr., uh, who was this reputed figure at Trinity College, who has written so many poems, uh, songs, and hymns about Sri Lanka. We do consider him as a, a part of our literature classroom, but we have an equally important uh, persona in uh, L.E. Blase, uh, who, who kind of flies under the radar uh, I think Blase's credentials as a historian, because he wrote uh, a history book, the early history of uh, Ceylon, uh, which was uh, used as a classroom text during that time, uh, until it was later replaced by uh, a book by actually Blase's uh, student, uh, Dr. G.C. Mendis, who went on to be a, a kind of a titan in the history department at Peradeni, a reputed scholar. 
so uh, when uh, when um, mendis's book came into it came in as a high school classroom text it was his uh, own teacher blase's book that went out of use so as a historian blase has a standing um and also he 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 is known uh, in the education sphere because he had very good uh, relations with uh, many of the other schools he was taken quite um, seriously renowned in some of the places one of his very good friends uh, was uh, cyril jans uh, who set up uh, st john's uh, in panadura he had a very good relationship with uh, trinity's uh, reverend fraser Uh, who was in many ways a kind of a senior to uh, to blase um blase has also written in my understanding the uh, school song of uh, princess of wales college in morotu um many of his family members were also in education uh i think one of blase's uh, own family members uh, started st clare's college in colombo so he is very much a kind of an omnipresent a fairly reputable figure in education um now when i kind of promote blase as a literary figure as a poet that is worthy of our time um i do this for a couple of reasons one is because of the uh, the progressive uh, silonis mindedness blase kind of tabled through his poetry which is very visible it's it's tangible in some of his writing uh which actually comes out as the prologues uh where he is um, conscious of uh silon as a sovereign as an independent as an emerging state and the need to consolidate consolidate that status uh, there are many examples you can uh, find if you take Uh, the body of prologues he writes uh, in the first decade of the 20th century right up to the 1930s after the 1930s there is a small paradigm shift i'll come to that in a minute but if you take those three decades there are many instances where you can see uh, a kind of a nationalistic uh, surge in which blase is caught but in a in an open silonis minded way not in a petty petty way Now I'll give you just one example as we go along. This is from the prologue of 1906. Now this is meant to be recited in open stage in his school, attended by the political and social elites of the country, uh, if not of Kandy at the time, people from other, you know, fellow education institutes who are invited to this kind of event, and the fraternity, the Kingswood fraternity. Now this from the tail end of the of the prologue 1906 reform we cry reform is in the air reform reform no matter what or where if london is too slow with its degree give us a local university if our boys take up the western mode shun the orient garments heavy load prefer scotch drinks yankee beef in tins forget how far their history begins how shall we wake anew the the patriot strain bring the ancient values back again the way is simple plain sure to please teach all our boys to speak in singalese now two things uh, one is this concern with the university because this is written in 1906 uh, i would say many years before the, uh, the the ceylon university is set up uh, the setting up of the ceylon university itself is i think it becomes a big political game it gets delayed and so many uh, tug of war you know situations there but this is blase because the standard practice at the time was to either get your degree from uh, calcutta uh, university set up in 1857 and that's where blase himself got his ba from calcutta uh in my understanding blase is the first uh, trinitian that, that's where he studied blase was a student of a young trinity 1870s uh he's the first trinitian to enter university get a degree um he worked in calcutta for a few years then in lahore 
Then he came back to Sri Lanka. It was a toss-up between, you know, uh, pursuing a career in law or starting a school. He opted for the second and, you know, set up Kingswood. Um, the other option was, of course, to go to London. That's where people got their degrees. Uh, London, you see this in uh, Martin Vikramsinghe novels and all that people returning from London. Mm, um, uh, forget about uh, Martin Vikramsinghe, some of the uh, some of the era-changing uh, thinkers of Sri Lankan society. These are people who came back from places like uh, the London School of Economics, um, the, the, the progressive left of the time. Now, what Blasi is saying is, do away with London and Calcutta. Let's set up our own thing. So in this emerging consciousness of a new nation, right, uh, an independent sovereign uh, Ceylon or Sri Lanka, uh, this is Blase wanting the education to be uh, equally independent and our own. Now, the second reference, uh, <laughs> a little bit of controversy there, because when I've been discussing this somewhere else, uh, someone raised the question, now, why does he say, teach all our boys to speak in Sinhalese? Mm. Now, for me, of course, this is Blase rooting for vernacular education. And for him, I would actually give him that allowance to say Sinhalese rather than say, you know, teach all our boys to speak Sinhalese and Tamil because uh, for me, written in 1906, the implications of saying, you know, let us speak in Sinhalese is probably different from the implications of saying the same thing, uh, 1950s, 19, saying the same thing today because our... Uh, the, 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 the segregation of society on a linguistic uh, platform uh, was very different uh, as someone would have understood it in 1906 from how it kind of came back as a political debate post-independence. So for me here, he is saying vernacular. He's saying both Sinhalese and Tamil, but, you know, he says Sinhalese. Mm, so these two examples... I would use as a kind of a gateway to Blase's own uh, mindset, his, his um, worldview as a young man writing at the turn of the century. Uh, now, there are other instances, but as I said earlier, Blase has a kind of a paradigm shift in the 1930s uh, where he becomes wary of this same nationalism that he roots for <laughs> at the at the, 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 in the first decade of the, the, the 20th. So 30 years down the line, he's a bit wary. He sees this uh, nationalist uh, resurgence actually splintering, divisive elements emerging, uh, racial-based platforms coming out. And in the 1930s, he's a little less uh, optimistic. And in the 1940s, I think that uh, dying optimism kind of gathers a momentum. Uh, he is all, I would say, celebratory when Sri Lanka gains uh, dominion status in 1948. Uh, but we can see that he's not uh, over the top. He's not in a partying mode when that happens. He says, well done, Sri Lanka, but definitely not in a <laughs> partying mode. Now, one thing I want to, want to highlight in this discussion is Blase's vision for a Silanese or a Sri Lankan community. Uh, that reaches over ethnic, linguistic, uh, religious kind of uh, pitfalls. And uh, this aspect of Blase uh, can best be understood by looking at the school culture that he groomed and encouraged at Kingswood, which to a certain degree, some of those things are still continued, still maintained. I don't know whether that maintenance is done out of a conscious understanding of where it comes from or whether it's just, uh, you know, keeping traditions alive. But one way or the other, there are some things that Blase invested in Kingswood uh, that actually mirrors his own vision for a Ceylonese society. Now, I think last week I was at a kind of a dinner with a few people um, and I was having this conversation with some others who come from reputed Sri Lankan schools, they are 
you know, um, alumni <laughs> of sorts. And they were actually kind of taken up by a kind of a casual fact I mentioned about Kingswood. That is that Kingswood, when school begins and school ends, uh, Kingswood doesn't have a culture where you actually say your religion out loud. You know, gatha or whatever, uh, prayers or gatha, nothing like that. You just have a one-minute silence. So in that one-minute silence, uh, whether you are a Buddhist, a Catholic, a Hindu, or a, you know of, of Islamic faith, or whether you are an atheist, whether you are Jain, <laughs> whether you are, everyone has a place, and you can do your own, you know, religious thing in silence on your own. Now that is very secular. Uh, <laughs> where I come from, which is not an allowance given in most schools in Sri Lanka, irrespective of uh, denomination. So now that is very Kingswoodian uh, and connects with where Blase comes from. I'll give a couple of examples. Now, one example is where Kingswood has a thing called the Kingswood Week. There's like a week where all the important things of the school happens, the prize giving, the sports meet, a day for fellowship where people come and meet each other, that kind of thing. The Kingswood Week actually has a thing called Kingswood Sunday, a Sunday they take for multi-faith religious activity, where technically, uh, as it is expected, all the boys get together, they go to multiple sites uh, of religious significance for different uh, religious communities. So this starts at the Dalada Maliga, the temple of the tooth relic. Then they go to Miramakkam Mosque, a historically significant big mosque in Kandy. Then to the Methodist Church, which is on the same street. Incidentally, this, um, you know, Sunday rituals, they have started as an initiative of the boys uh, themselves. So the boys had actually started this long ago. Uh, without telling the teachers, uh, the administration. And Blase has got to know about this. And um, he has actually officially adopted that to the school almanac. So that is uh, one incident. And then a second incident. Now, this is actually one of those curious mysteries for me. But this is worth a mystery, you know, uh, pursuing after. Kingswood has this uh, annual cricket big match. Uh, the kind of thing Royal plays with St. Thomas's, uh, Trinity plays with uh, St. Anthony's. Kingswood's annual cricket big match is supposed to be the oldest such encounter in Kandy. And this is played with Dharmaraja. Dharmaraja comes from a very different background. Its foundation is very different. Uh, so Dharmaraja is the same as Ananda in Colombo, Mahinda in Gaul. Comes from a uh, all cut kind of uh, background. Um, uh, some of the things that are done at the Almaraj are very different from how they were done at Kingswood. Now, in the 1890s, when these big matches were started, it would have been very realistic for Kingswood to actually start their big, to have their big match with Trinity. Because Trinity and Kingswood had a closer relationship at that point. Uh, Blase being an old old Trinitian and Blase having a close relationship with that school. Um, some of the greats of Trinity of that time, a, a little bit after, people like uh, Reverend uh, A.G. Fraser, for example, uh, known to be very close to Blase, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but for some reason, Kingswood actually opts to have the big match with, uh, you know, ideologically speaking, uh, a school different uh, from their own, Dharmaraja. Now, why did this happen? <laughs> Big mystery. Uh, but it gives an instance uh, for us to appreciate the amelioration between diversity, the kind of broad, uh, inclusive uh, mindset that uh, kind of drove educationists like Blase. Now, in 1947, uh, it's very close to independence. Uh, Blase writes a prologue, which is important for two reasons. One is that the prize giving of this year, the chief guest is G.C. Mendes. So Blase is one-time student, now a big 
a professor at Pera Dinia. He's coming back to his old school as a chief guest. And Blas is writing the prologue to in, in which there are four lines dedicated to the chief guest to welcome him back. The second is because uh, Trinity College is celebrating 75 years in this particular year. And there are a couple of lines uh, dedicated to Trinity as well. So I thought of like uh, sharing this because this is a very good, it, this, this is very typical of Blase. Uh, because for Blase, community matters. It's a very community-centered culture that he was developing. But community didn't mean, you know, in, in a narrow sense, kings would only. But, uh, you know, what, what, what else, other, other institutes, other, other organisms that were around Kingswood were equally important. Uh, I, I, again, there's another prologue. Uh, this is uh, probably 1950, uh, 90, uh, 1950, 60 years of uh, Hillwood College. A similar homage is paid to Hillwood. Um, I, I won't be reading that. I'll be reading this one. Uh, so Mahanur, the great city queen of queenliest cities men have ever seen, fosters her eldest born of schools to hold the torch of learning brightly as of old. Salute to Trinity. What's 75? A century hence, she will be still alive. And now, sir, this is to Mendes, right? And now, sir, you we welcome here tonight our keenest seeker after truth and light well will you play in life your chosen part because you carry kingshood in your heart so it's a very kind of a touching moment this is a teacher to student uh, welcoming him back to the school uh, to preside as you know the main man at the prize giving uh, Blas's career is also, I think, uh, um, very strongly set uh, around the Dutch Burger Union. I think he was secretary of the Dutch Burger Union for many years. He has uh, published uh, tirelessly on behalf of the uh, DBU. Uh, the Dutch, Dutch Burger Union journals carry a lot of Blas's material. He was also a journalist at one point. And interestingly, uh, University of Peradeni at one point had uh, invited Blase to be its librarian, which at that point was the third highest share in the university uh, structure. But uh, Blase had said no because he wanted to uh, stay with the school even though he was retired from the school formally in 1923. He continued with the school. Where Kingswood is concerned, Blase uh, published a short history of the first 25 years of the school in 1931. It's titled uh, KFE, The Story of Kingswood Candy. KFE stands for Kingswood Forever. It's like a very, uh, you know, informal kind of greeting among uh, Kingswoodians. Um, and Blase went on uh, to live uh, 90 years of which uh, I would say Kingswood was his life's work. Uh, my feeling is that a writer like Blase uh, merits a place in the Sri Lankan canon, especially if you take the first part of the 20th century, because uh, at one level, he's a figure of, a, of an era of emerging nationalism, who had a Silanese consciousness, but also someone who was plugged into different spheres that were uh, I would say instrumental uh, to the to the to the young nation, like education, for example, writing at several levels, but also as a historian and a scholar. Uh, so definitely, if anyone has an opportunity, here is another writer for people to check up on: Louis Edmund Blase. Mm -hmm.